So in order for us to change out the transducer, we need to disconnect the multifunction display up here in the helm and unconnect the cable from there and start pulling it back. And we'll have to pull that all the way back up into the bow area where the transducer is uh, mounted in the bottom of the hull there. So we got our work cut out for us. This is not going to be an easy project at all. Under here is where the transducer, right under this access panel here, the transducer is uh, mounted up there in the bow. And then we routed the new transducer cable from under there, fold, fold along through here, and under here, under there, and here it is right here. We still have to run a cable, a uh, network cable from back there, and then up through the engine room. In here, it's gonna come back through through there, and we gotta get it up into up through here into the cockpit. And then we'll tie that into the nav pod area. Welcome back to another exciting and thrill-filled adventure with DIY Nautical Dream. All right, welcome back. We're back at it again. We're in for another DIY fun-filled project. And this time we are installing a NEMA 2000 backbone system. And we're going to route this from the very forward cabin of the boat under the floor, all the way back and up and through the engine compartment and up to the helm area. So that ought to be fun. Not like this is a small boat and um, unfortunately on this boat, underneath the bilge is not the most fun area to work. There's not a lot of room on this boat under the bilge, as you'll soon see. Um, you may have noticed there's something a little bit different on this, this week's episode. I am missing my baby. No worries. She's out having fun and she's uh, enjoying the, her time away and we're going to keep on doing what we do. Well, look who's joined us. Baby, there you are. Hi guys, what's going on? What's up? Anyways, I'm taking this video right now from the Philippines. I'm sorry I'm not there right now, but I just want to help my husband to give you guys an update to our DIY project. Anyways, let us know what's going on, honey. Okay. Have you been working or you're just playing? <laughs> and we're staying busy working on the boat, doing these DIY projects. The fun never stops. We're continuously moving forward little by little. We're trying to make this boat into a thing of beauty. And by installing this NEMA 2000 backbone system, this is going to enable us to modernize electronics and navigation on this boat and bring it up to modern times. Stay tuned and we're going to route this and once it's installed then nothing's holding us back except for money as far as the upgrades go and uh, well we either have one or the other we have money or time but we never have both at the same. So we're gonna move on and stay tuned and baby if you're watching hope you enjoy it I miss you and it's not the same without you. Alright stay tuned let's get going. This week's project takes us again to another job that's underneath the waterline and we just have to continue knocking these jobs out so we can hopefully start getting prepared for splashing this boat at some point in the future. It's going to happen eventually, hopefully sooner than later. So in this episode we're going to be installing the NEMA 2000 networking backbone system and this is going to allow everything to communicate together on the same backbone, same network line. And so this is going to start out in the bow and it's going to end up all the way up and through the engine compartment area and up to the helm cockpit area. We need to have a networking cable in order for everything to communicate together. 
And so that's a big part of the reason why we're doing this. Uh, to install this NMEA 2000 starter kit, because um, what we're our project is we're going to convert our Ray Marine electronics over to B and G electronics. And so one of the first things we need to change out on the boat is the multifunction display, which was up top, which was Ray, uh, old, outdated Ray Marine depth gauge. We're going to put in this new Ray Marine uh, multifunction display. And that, this one's going to be dedicated to depth, speed, and temperature of the water that the boat is in. And then uh, in this box here is the transducer set. So we're going to be, going to be installing this new, a new transducer, which has a, uh, has a speed wheel here at the bottom. And then it's also got the transducer right here. That portion will measure the the depth and the temperature of the water. This this part right here is for measuring the speed the of the water when the boat's passing through it. This wheel spins, and that's how they measure the speed. It will pair up with this. It'll this is going to be the network cable that will run forward and aft to the boat under the underneath the floor. And so all of our electronics will tie into this. The ones from up in the uh, cockpit area will will tap into this from up up in the helm, and go down go down in through the engine room. So, yeah, it, it'll be easier to show it than to explain it. But either way, it's not really a uh, visually interesting job. Once we have this powered up, it'll kind of give you a better idea of what we're trying to do, but eventually we want to go all B&G electronics. I like some of the new features that B&G has. This boat has really outdated electronics anyways, so we're going to go B&G. But that also means we're going to be switching over to B&G Autopilot and uh, radar and our chart plotter and everything. So it's going to be a piece at a time because it's going to be really expensive and I, uh, I don't think we want to pay for it all at once. So in order for us to change out the transducer, we need to disconnect the multifunction display up here in the helm and unconnect the cable from there and start pulling it back. And we'll have to pull that all the way back up into the bow area where the transducer is uh, mounted in the bottom of the hull there. So we got our work cut out for us. This is not going to be an easy project at all. So we thought this would be easy to get this disassembled. Well, that's our first obstacle. We got to find the right tool to fit in there. I thought it was an Allen wrench, but obviously that's not going to work. So we have to find the right type of socket to get in there. And um, once we get that, then we'll be able to get this thing disconnected. So we had to go for a little trip to the Marine hardware store to get a special T-handle tool that fits in there on these nav pods. And uh, that'll allow us to get the back cover off so we can get access. Once we have access, well, now we have all these wires and everything else hanging out in there, so we got to figure out which one is the one to the depth, speed, and temperature transducer, and then we can start disconnecting that. Well, after seeing the inside of the nav pod there, man, they got wires going all over the place. So I'm really glad we're getting into this, and uh, we're going to make this up to the modern times and upgrade everything in here. And I don't like having all these jumper wires going back and forth, and it just, you know, we want to reduce the risk of a problem, so... This will be a good upgrade. It's not going to be fun, but it'll be a good one. Now the trick is to find the cable that goes to the transducer and start pulling it back from the multifunction display and down through the engine room as well. And eventually we're going to be going under the floor with this thing, but we've identified the cable and now the trick is to be pulling it all the way through. And we want to connect a mouse line, a small piece of twine to the cable so that when we pull it through, it'll be easier to find the route when we're routing the new one back in. That should make a little bit more sense later on once once we get a little bit more into this project, but just kind of want to let you know what we're up to. So the way this boat was originally set up was they had separate transducers. One was for speed and the other one was for depth and temperature. And so we removed the one for depth and temperature and we just left the speed sensor in there just to keep the hole plugged. And eventually we'll take that out and fiberglass over it and fill that hole. But for now, we don't have we don't have the ability to do that. So here we're going to be replacing the old one. It's uh, got a few wheels broken off of the paddle where the paddles are, and it's not even pointing in the right direction. So it probably wasn't doing much good when it was working. 
So we're going to go ahead and mount the new one over here in this new hole where we remove the uh, temperature and depth sensor. And we'll clean up this 5200 that's left around here and get the hole nice and clean, prep it, ready for the new seal. And then we'll just leave this one. I think the new spot's a better location for it anyways. This speed transducer here is not even working. It's missing a couple of paddles off the paddle wheel. And we think due to its location, that's where the straps go for uh, lifting the boat in and out of the water. And so that might be a bad spot for that after all. And our new location we're going to mount is next to the forward facing sonar dome. And that we don't have to worry about the strap breaking anything off. All right, so first order of business in getting the new transducer in is uh, you can see that I have a wood plug in there. I, use, I just use that to plug the hole. But the old uh, rubber uh, washer, seal washer down there is still attached. So I'm going to have to remove that first, make sure that surface is clean. And then uh, <laughs> we'll go to the exterior of the boat on the bottom side of the hull where the old through hole fitting was and we'll clean off the old uh, 5200 sealant that's still remaining there and we'll clean and prep that surface as well and then get ready to install the new through hole fitting the housing that the uh, transducer will, will reside in this should only take a few minutes and we can start moving on and uh, yeah you can see it's not too bad down here we got pretty good space uh, area is not too bad as far as cleanliness goes. Somebody had actually uh, cleaned and painted the bilge before, so all right. So you can uh, you can see the hole. The gasket has been removed. The rubber the rubber gasket's been removed from the hole, and now we're ready to go outside and clean off the old 5200 and get that prepped for uh get it sanded smooth make sure it's clean and so nothing no water can leak past the through hole fitting once it's sealed in place that'll be what's next and that's the old rubber o-ring that was removed it was actually in pretty good shape but we have a new one might as well use it we don't want to cut corners here because uh one mistake we might have a leak we don't want Anyways, our boat is made of fiberglass, so we're going to review the instructions for installing in a fiberglass boat. So this is the installation we're going to be doing through fiberglass. And so we'll go ahead and we'll put sealant all around here, the areas that are blacked out. Put sealant there, good bead of it on the bottom here so we get a nice squeeze out. And then we'll put some plenty on these threads here so that when it comes up in through the hole, we'll have a little bit of sealant carried up with it. Then we'll put the uh, the rubber washer down and then we'll thread the nut down and we'll get that nice and snug so that we get a good squeeze out on the outside of the hull here and then we'll go outside and we'll fare that, clean that off and fare in the squeeze out and then we'll be ready to install our uh, our through hole fitting, the uh, sensor. So that'll be cool. And then we'll have a new one in there and uh, we'll be able to start running our wires for it. So that'll be a nice thing. All right, so what we'll do here is we're gonna go ahead and put a very liberal amount of sealant, the marine sealant on here. And then we'll put a little bit inside here and then we'll get ready to install the through hole fitting. And uh, we'll come back after that. Okay, so we got lots of seal on there. And on here. And we got that. It's not too complicated. We got pretty good squeeze out. Next thing we'll do is go inside and install the net in the gasket. All right, so now we're ready to put the the new rubber the new rubber grommet washer on. And then next we'll go ahead and start We'll put the threaded plastic washer on there and the directions say not to put it down too tight so we don't want to we don't want to damage the plastic housing and we don't want to we don't want to crack the washer either so we'll make it nice and snug the directions said there's no orientation on the through hole fitting it can go uh, pointing any direction we want 
So I just decided to put the little flapper valve facing forward. If it turns when we're tightening it, it doesn't matter. And it said hand tight only. So we'll make it we'll make it nice and tight, but not too tight. So we're gonna make it a little bit tighter. Get that squeeze out a chance to squeeze out down below a little bit. And then we'll snug it a little bit more here in just a second. Hopefully, hopefully we get a couple more turns out of the nut. That will tell us that the squeeze out was starting to squeeze out. And it did. It did turn a little bit more. <clears throat> so that's a good sign. That's a good sign that we had some squeeze out happening. We'll give it a couple more seconds and we'll try and tighten it again. And hopefully the nut will tighten a little bit more. Oh yeah. So that tells me we're getting squeeze out down below on the outside of the hull. Because as long as we let it sit for a little bit, then we can tighten it some more. We'll repeat that process over a few times until we don't get any more turns out of the nut. So, we'll wait again, a few more seconds, and then we'll try and try and tighten it down just a little bit more. But you'll see, you'll see we actually get a few turns, maybe a quarter turn out of the nut. So we'll watch. It wasn't quite, not quite a quarter turn, but we're definitely getting getting a little bit of squeeze out each time we do that so. but all in all on the inside anyways this is a pretty pretty straightforward and clean installation it's not too bad we have decent access which is nice um, you know we'll keep going we'll give it a little bit more time and we'll try and see if we get some more squeeze out should get a little bit more turn on the nut. Anyways, that's where we're at. Let's see, we'll get a, more, a little more turn out of it. Not much. So that tells me we're pretty much at the squeeze out. Done squeezing out the sealant down below. Anyways. Okay, so we just now finished uh, tightening down the, uh, the plastic jam nut here on the, the new through hole fitting. This fixture here. And then our new transducer will actually sit right inside this, this through hole fitting here. And uh, yeah. And so on the outside of the hole, we have sealant in the process of squeezing out. And so I'll let it sit for, you know, uh, maybe 15 more seconds. And then I'll try and give it a little bit more turn on the jam nut. But we've done that a few times now and we're not getting, we're not getting much uh, turn out of it now. So that tells me we're just about seated on the outside. The flange is done uh, squishing out all the excess sealant, and we're just about we're just about where we want to be. So I'll try and give this a little bit more, a little bit more turn. Yeah, so we're pretty much there, and that's where we want to be. They want it to be hand tight, and because uh, it's just a plastic housing. So I think we'll call that good, and uh, let's we'll go on the outside and see what kind of squeeze out we have, and then we'll we'll fair in the squeeze out. We'll fair in the squeeze out, and uh, then we'll go ahead and get come back inside and start installing the new transducer and routing some of the wires. Yeah, that'll be fun. All right, so as you can see, we have really good, really good even squeeze out all the way around. We'll go ahead and clean that off, and then uh, see what it looks like once it's done and all cleaned off, and the sealant's fared in. All right, we'll be back in a little bit. All right, so here we go. We fared it in. Squeeze out's nice and fared in now. And so the seal is nice, smooth, and even. And we won't get much water disruption as the boat's passing through the water. It should be nice and smooth. Anyways, that's all. And then we'll just touch it up with uh, bottom paint at a later time. So you can see the through-hole fitting is now installed. It's been sealed. It's been tightened down. We're good to go with that. And you can even see the flap down inside the through hole fitting 
That is so you can change out the transducer while you're in the water if you wanted to, and it'll limit the amount of water coming in through the hole. It has a little flapper door that closes up, and you're supposed to be able to do it without making a big mess. Now this is ready for the new transducer to be installed. All right, we'll see if we can put a little bit more. Nope, can't tighten it anymore. So I think they were pretty, pretty tight on that. And so now we have, we have our transducer here. It's a, uh, got an arrow that points on it, says forward towards the bow. So we'll make sure that that's orientated towards the front. And then we'll just put the excess cable down in here for right now. We'll route that later. The trick is to tighten down the retainer ring while at the same time keeping the arrow pointing as straight forward as we can have it. We don't want it pointing off to the left or the right or off center. It could uh, deviate from the readings we would get, so we're just going to try and do our best to hold it straight while we tighten down the things here. Well, we're pointing. I'm not quite forward, so let me see if I can. Let me see if I can fix that. Kind of like to have it. Pointing it straight forward if we can. You're just going to adjust it a little bit so it's pointing straight forward. We don't want it off to one angle or another, just as straight as we can get it. All right, that's good. Let's take a look. Let's see. Now we're pointing forward. So that's good. Hopefully we're good to go on that. What we'll have to do next is we'll have to install the rest of the NMEA NEMA 2000, the main wire, and hook up the power to it, and uh, get everything connected up. So that'll and work. the next thing we'll have to do is we'll have to start routing the wires aft and hook into the main bus terminal or bus cable, and um, that'll all power up to the uh, multifunction display we're going to put up in the cockpit. So it'll be kind of cool. See how all this all works out. Lots of wire routing up ahead though. What we did is I have this, this uh, twine here, and this goes all the way up to the cockpit. So what I did is, as I was pulling the old wire out, I, I had this connected to it and was pulling this through the system. So this, this is kind of nice to, it's a mouse line to uh, attach the new wire to and pull it through. So it follows the same routing that the old wires were on. And uh, anyways, if not, I could have always just, you know, laid it and tied it in place along the way too. So the routing's pretty simple once you know how everything goes. Anyways. So here's a good view of that newly installed three-in-one transducer, depth, speed, and temperature. That's an upgrade from the previous one that was installed before. And eventually we'll touch this up with uh, bottom paint, but we are working towards a pre-splash checklist. And this was one of the items that we had to get done, so we're happy with that. Up next, it's time to figure out where we're going to put this networking NEMA 2000 backbone system in the boat. Um, this is going to be great for future upgrades. It'll make them all a little bit easier later on down the road, but the hard work needs to be done first. So we just got to choose the location and get started on that. Well, this ought to be fun. None of this came with any instructions, so I'm going to have to figure out how all this works. I mean, I understand this hooks up to a power support, uh, power source and ties into this main harness somehow. I know this is probably going to go uh, lengthwise in the boat from forward and aft. That's cool. I get that. And then uh, this, uh, yeah. And we'll figure it out. I, I know I, there's some videos on YouTube I was watching, and so um, I'll go back and watch those again. But 
The nice thing about this is once everything gets all hooked up, I'm going to have several of these T fittings inside the nav pod area. I'll have a couple of these in there. And so really, everything should, all the gauges should just tie into this uh, backbone system here. And then we only have to run one wire down from the helm, down uh, through the engine room and tie into the main, the main uh, wire harness. So... I'm hoping that'll be a lot easier because this is pretty, this is pretty bulky, uh, diameter-wise to still try and run through a really small uh, tube up into the helm. So that's still going to be tricky because there's other wires in there as well. But we might just have to delete all those other gauges and run this. So we'll figure it out. But, but anyways, yeah. So we got some wiring up ahead of us. So we're gonna have to gonna have to plan this this out because it's not just going to be for this it's going to be for the uh the navigation system and all the other instruments as well so we'll slowly upgrade to all bng equipment right on that's what we got we're gonna have to figure this out so okay so now the fun part begins now i have to route this much bigger cable i have to run this aft and uh, we're going to go down under the floor and then we'll follow it under here, under there, and then just uh, we'll go about three feet after the mast and then we're going to stop and then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll tie in some T-fittings there and that's where we'll, we'll uh, We'll connect this and then we'll coil and stow uh, whatever's left over because I know we're going to have excess length. But um, we'll leave a big we'll we'll leave a big loop here up in this end, and then we'll leave the the rest of the the uh, cable will be in the back after the mast. And then uh, my reasoning for that is because we're going to have things we'll have new uh, radar that's going to be running on the NMEA 2000 network as well, and um, our uh, our wind meter also will be running on that. So we'll have those cables coming down from the base of the mast and they'll all tie into that same uh, T network back there. So anyways, that's what we're gonna do. And uh, you know, I ran this the full length of the run as I was pulling the other cable out of the system uh, from the old transducer. I was hoping that, you know, we'd be able to tie this on and pull it through, but it's just too big. I can just tell by looking at it, we're gonna struggle. So um, we don't wanna damage anything, so we're just gonna route it by hand. Okay, well, so far uh, we started the, the run of the new transducer cable um, from right down here. You can see the new transducer there, and you can see the cable. I have a nice uh, large loop zip tied into it, and that's just in case uh, we need to move the transducer you know, uh, to a different location, to a different through hole fitting, or if it's fine the way it is, it gives us a little bit of room to maneuver it around later once everything's all tied into place. But for now, uh, it's a lot of working on my stomach, laying down, reaching and trying to feel for things that we can't see. So, um, but it's coming along anyway. So we made it, made it down through there and then, uh, kind of a little, tricky here maneuvering through here but we have we have made it through down under there and we have it running running through there and and for now it's just all it's all loosely just loosely zip tied into place but Anyways, this is where we're at with it right now, just to there, so, yep. And then uh, our goal is to, to get it from there, under there, through there, and then uh, we're gonna have it end. It'll end hopefully right about there. And then we'll have uh, We'll have the T-fittings. We'll have a couple extra T-fittings there because we're going to have other add-ons later. And then um, we'll have it, uh, the backbone will connect into the 
T-fittings there. So um, all in all, I think it's going to be it's going to be kind of a cool cool setup. It's definitely new to us, my wife and I. And um, so yeah, we're going all B and G. You know, we have these items still to tie in. Uh, we'll put we'll put all these T-fittings here uh, at the back of the mast. And then this is going to go up in the uh, cockpit area. And um, yeah, so it'll be cool. We're going to switch over to B&G because I like some of the features. I like the sail steer um, with the autopilot that they have. But uh, we'll have to upgrade to all of that stuff. So it's going to be spendy. Uh, we're not going to buy it all in one shot. And we'll just buy it a piece at a time and we'll get the capabilities to run those items. And once we plug them in, everything will just recognize and uh, should be really easy to set up. And the cable will run from the from the bow all the way to uh, inside the engine compartment here. So yeah, it'll eventually, it'll eventually come in from back there and then we'll tie it up and it'll come up into, it'll go up into the cockpit up there. So I have this I have this red wire just kind of running all the way up to the to the nav pod setup that's up there, and uh, that way if we have to pull it through, whatever we need to do, we'll, we'll have that. That'll be like a mouse wi mouse line to uh, to run everything up there. But um, we're only gonna have to run from the cockpit. We'll only have to run maybe one or two main cables. Everything else will tie into T fittings up in the up in the nav pod area. So that should work out pretty good. I think the only ones that'll have to come down will be like the uh, chart plotter cable and one backbone cable to tie into the T fittings that we're gonna have up in the nav, nav pod area. So yeah, should work out pretty good. Um, but getting it there is gonna be a little, a little tricky. It's not so fun, but uh, you would think on a boat this size, the build would be nice and open, but it's just the opposite. It's a very tight, compact area. For now, we want to get these. Uh, we just want to get the uh, depth finder uh, transducer cable run up to the nav pod area up in the cockpit and power it up. Hopefully tomorrow. Like I said, that was the starting point right there, and then uh, we hope to we hope to end up just about three feet after the mast. So, and then uh, we'll have some T fittings for everything to tie in there. So yeah, right here. This is up in the uh, forward cabin it's not too bad it's actually one of the uh nice condition places on the boat right now this is actually not in really that bad a shape so for some reason this area stayed nice and dry and so we didn't have any problems there were no problems with moisture on on this section of the boat so um but yeah for sure we have our we have our share of work cut out for us still we've done a lot of work but we still have a long ways to go so Anyways, right now the task is to uh, to get that transducer wired up so we can have depth and speed and temperature, at least that up in the cockpit so we can, uh, if, the, if for some reason we have to put the boat in the water, we'll be ready to go at least with that. And then everything else can be added once, once the boat's in the water, we can add all the other uh, features of the navigation and electronics once it's in the water. But for sure we gotta have that. We gotta have our depth and speed temperature transducer in, so, and which we do. So if for some reason the, bo the boat had to go in the water like right now, we could even do that, but we wouldn't have any reading on how deep the water is, so. Oh, the joys of running long electrical runs. It reminds me of the old days, what I used to do for a living, but this time we're doing it on a boat. It's all part of the fun. We'll be happy when it's done. A little quick update. We got it routed from there. Um, under there, under there, uh, through the that, uh, past the mast base, or base of the mast, and then to right here. So I'm just trying to decide if I want to have it tie into the T-blocks here, or maybe aft here. Let's see. Let's see. Oh yeah, I think we'll have it. I think we'll bring it back here. We got a little bit more room back here, and we might be able to might be able to make something work up in here next to this little terminal block. We'll run it back into here, 
and then uh, that'll be a good spot for anything that's coming off of the mast can come back to here and should we put another uh, transducer up in the front we can tie that back into here anyways that's where we're at so we're making really good progress but we still have a long ways to go so the next step is to we're gonna tie all this in and route that that's the actual network cable there so anyways it's kind of fun but it's kind of not fun at the same time that's where we're at all right so what we have here is the uh, transducer wire from up front up in the bow we've routed it back to uh, just I don't know just a little forward amidship and this is where we're going to put in all of our uh, our T fittings here this is going to be kind of like our our NEMA 2000 junction area and so this will be where the the power is going to come into the system the uh, forward transducer is going to end here and then we will pick up uh, right here. This will be backbone harness. Anyways, that's going to hook up here. So we'll have three things hooking up here. We'll install our terminators. And um, so you have a male and we have a female terminator. And we'll put those on. And they can only go on one way. They're clocked. So then you just thread this down. make it nice and tight okay same thing with the other connector it only goes on one way you have to turn it till the key lines up just like that and then just thread it down okay and so that's what we have right there and now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and hook up the uh, the transducer cable and it clocks on here a specific way also just like that and then we'll thread it down make it make it pretty tight okay so that's not going to come loose and the idea is is it's going to sit right there we're not going to permanently route anything we're not going to tie everything down nice and tight until we're all done installing this th this system um, later we're going to add new radar uh, new windex at the top of the mast which is for our wind meter and all that stuff so we're going to be routing up to this point we'll be bringing more wires from the uh, from the mast and bringing them aft so right now what i'll do is we have our we have our this is our power our power input which is going to power up the system this here we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and install this and although it's not connected to any power source at this time we'll go ahead and get it on here and then we'll run a power wire off of the distribution panel in the electrical room we'll run a power wire off of the breaker panel to connect up with this at a later time and then also while we're here we're going to go ahead and hook up the rest of the, I think this is called the backbone wire, backbone harness. Go ahead and hook this up also at this time. And it clocks in, see it just clocks in in a certain manner. And what I like about this is it's expandable so later we're gonna have other other items coming in at this at this area and so we can add more T fittings later and make this wider and have more items feeding in uh, to get them in into introduced into the system so it's really nice um, of course this is my first time working with this so I'm hoping that everything goes as planned but you know how it is with with boat projects not everything goes as planned so at this time that's about as that's about as far as we're going to go with that so uh we'll leave this in here for now and maybe uh at a later time if this if this doesn't seem like it's uh sufficient maybe we mount it 
up above like this. That way it gets it a little higher up away from the batteries. And uh, I kind of like that. I think that's what we'll do in the future is we're going to have a way of, we're going to mount this up here with some, probably some uh, click bonds, which are epoxy uh, threaded inserts. We'll, we'll start them up here and then have a way to attach it up there. Next, we'll start routing these we'll start routing these two these two wires we'll introduce those into the main harness and start routing those aft and uh, at some point we'll hook up another power source to this um, right now we don't have anything we're going to be running uh, I still need to get more T fittings and uh, probably some more terminators so so we're going to need at least a couple more T fittings yeah it's always something so I don't have enough to be able to power this up today but I have enough to get it uh, at least to the engine room and uh, maybe up into the helm. We'll see. Gotta have some more T fittings, that's for sure. Man. All right, well, that's how it is, you know. So, anyways, for now, we'll just keep going along and uh, we'll get this routed, get everything installed, and um, just keep on running it aft. We're just gonna introduce it into this harness and we'll just keep running it aft under the floor and then it'll go back here under there and then it'll come up into the engine room and then start routing up along the engine the wall of the engine room we're just going to go ahead and get it running back keep moving it aft and uh, we'll get this power wire to a point where we can hook up a power source to it and this is the, the called the backbone harness. Anyways, we'll get that and start running that aft to the engine room. And then we'll hook up another junction, another set of T-fittings back there. All right. So what I'm going to do here is while we're routing this harness under all the floorboards and everything like that, we're going to go ahead and put this terminator on there just to prevent anything from uh, getting inside this connector. Or otherwise, I would, if I didn't have one of these terminators, I would just tape it off so that nothing can get in there and foul it. But for now, we'll just use the Terminator. It's kind of a nice, uh, helps guide it through the wire harness as well. So unwind it a little bit and then we'll, uh, we'll get it to go here. Start running it under the floor. We're following the same path as where the, inner, the uh, original transducer cable was routed which went all the way up into the cockpit area of the helm and uh, so we're following that same path it's really not anything too complicated but and just like that we're already getting it back here now so just going through these these zip ties i have them installed loosely because I know we're going to be adding a lot of things to this this main harness and I just want to keep the form of the harness as best we can so that's why I have it just keeping them really loose so we'll just continue continue routing this uh, back here it's not and it's not bad work, it's just, you know, it's under the floor, nothing under there is clean, uh, and, uh, you know, it's a lot of on my knees, laying down, but it's all right. I used to run uh, electrical and airplanes, so this isn't much different other than the fact that this is a boat and it doesn't fly. Now we'll run the power source. We'll get that under under the floor here and then we'll be able to take it a little bit farther aft. And that's where we'll tie in to the uh, power wires that are gonna go to this, the power source. And it's a little tricky because this is gonna 
a fuse block attached to it. So we kind of just want to loosely pull it until it comes through. And there we go. See? We have it right here. Again, we'll pull it under the zip tie, the loosely attached zip tie. And that's the nice thing about having these zip ties loose is uh, we can introduce new wires, new cables, whatever, to these runs. And uh, it still keeps the harness, the main harness, in a relative, uh, relatively organized manner. And so we'll just kind of, I'm just going to lay this right here. There's nothing, no power to it or nothing. So we're just going to lay it there for now. And then we'll, uh, we'll add another insulated pair like this. And we'll lead it up to this and, and add it into the harness. Okay, okay, so what I went ahead and did was I taped this uh, pair of insulated uh, wires. There's a positive and negative in here. And I just taped those to this bundle, the, uh, the what do you call it, the backbone harness or whatever, backbone cable. And uh, anyway, so the, my thought is um, as I'm pulling this through, I might as well pull through the uh, two pairs of wires and I need to get back to the breaker panel. And so this will get me by pulling it through the same run, I have to go that way anyways until we get into the engine room and then, and then these, two pe these two wires will separate and we'll take this and it'll go to the breaker panel and this one will go right up underneath the uh, cockpit floor which is where the wires will come out of the helm and we'll have some another junction T fitting there. But for right now we're going to go ahead and uh, we'll get this routed, start routing it into the main uh, harness here and this is this is just a pre-route we'll do a final route and clamp tie up and all that stuff later but uh, you just want to we got to get started somewhere and so this has got to go sorry about that so this has to go up under the floor it's going to go under here and then it's going to come out it's going to come out up here and then it'll follow this harness back and it'll go up along here and back so as we get once we get through here we'll we'll readjust the camera you can see it routing up into the uh alongside the generator and up along the inside the engine room wall here so once we get that far we'll we'll readjust the camera but for right now i'm going to go ahead and just work on getting it under the floor here so it's a bit of a struggle to make that short distance. Oh. Well, I ended up having to take out the companionway stairs, trying to get it up through here. From that little spot up through there is a very tight fit. We got this uh, coolant hose and all these uh, harnesses and fuel lines and everything coming up through here. And it's just a really tight fit. So um, we're gonna have to, we're just gonna have to do it without, without the companionway stairs for now. Yep, there you can see the, uh, you can see the generator is exposed, the uh, fuel filter for the generator right there, <laughs> and then uh, some big power feeder wires right here, right alongside here. I'm gonna try and get this thing fed through here. It looks like we're doing it the hard way. So, continuing on, I just wanna get it up in here. But it does not wanna go. Here we go. See right here? Good thing we taped the uh, the power wire, the twisted pair of power wires to it at the same time. So because now having the stairs out, having the companionway stairs out made a world of difference, I'll tell you. So now we'll just we'll feed all of our all our slack in there at the same time. So what a what a joy that was. So anyways, we got it through. It's kind of a mess. It's like running with spaghetti here for a while. This is actually a big plus to be getting this done. And then, uh, like I said, we don't have, I don't think we have many more wires. We have to run this direction in, in the foreseeable future. So we'll just, we'll just keep feeding it in there. It's not hard work, it's just awkward position. The good news is the spot where we ended up 
coming up through the floor here. Uh, we don't have to worry about this chafing. It's it's in the middle of the it's in the middle of two other wire harnesses. So and they have they have uh, chafe protection on them. So they're gonna be all right. Uh, but I've done worse things than this. Running wires on the airplane is a lot harder than this. So in the 737 model up in the nose wheel well where the nose main nose landing gear goes that's a tight area okay. as far as we're going to go with that now the power wire we're going to want to pull a little bit of extra because it's going to have to actually go farther You can see where we're at here, so um, come pretty far. We have the, this is our, our backbone cable, and that's our power, uh, power supply cable for the NEMA 2000 system. And so here's our, here's our routing. You can see it kind of just hanging down right there. Our plan is to get it back there past all those wires and then uh, I'll come around and show you where we're headed where we're headed to with this all right so I don't know if you can see it or not but it's actually hanging down right here this is our wire see and it just needs to go behind this behind that Behind there, We're, I got a, I got a, I got a mouse, mouse line, just a twine cable. I ran through the whole system, so I know where, I know where we want to go with everything. So we want to go all the way up and into the bottom of the cockpit. So on up above, up above here, is the floor of the cockpit, which the helm pedestal mounts to, and the wire runs up through the, one of the legs of the pedestal. And then our power supply wire is going to go down here, go through here, and it'll end up at the back of our uh, our breaker panel in the uh, electronics room. So yeah. So here we are right here. I pulled it through a little bit more. I want to try and stay as original as we can, just because it keeps everything stable and securely routed. Wow, this almost works out exactly where we want it to be. Because we really want this. We want this to end up right around in here somewhere because we're gonna right around in here somewhere because we're gonna have um we're gonna have some T fittings. We're gonna have a T fitting that comes down here. So this will essentially just kind of like stow somewhere around here. And uh, then we'll have our our drop down wire will go up through the pedestal, the base of the pedestal and up to our uh, nav pod setup, which is up in the cockpit. So we're, uh, we're, heading, we're heading in the right direction. Okay, so we're struggling just a little bit. We have, the, uh, we have the data cable as far as we're gonna go with that. It's gonna stay just hanging like that. But now we have the power cable. This is gonna go all the way to the uh, control panel, which is inside the uh, electronics room. And I've gotta, let's see if I can show you here. I've got to get it through all that. Back to where the light is at. Can you see the light back there? Well, anyways, that's what we have to do. So I tried to, I tried to push it in as far as I can. Um, I don't know how far that goes. Maybe it's a couple feet. But I put some blue tape on it, and hopefully we can, hopefully we can identify it on the other side and maybe find it see if i can reach in and grab it if i can maybe okay so here's the light i put back here now moment of truth let's see if we can even find it in this mess of wires back here have to be careful here because we're dealing with some uh some voltage okay so here we go, I pushed it through and then we'll see if we can find it. And looks like it's right here. So that's a good thing. 
we'll just pull the slack through. And now, that's that. So we have the slack pulled through and we have plenty of extra length. See, more than enough. Because where we're gonna terminate it is right back here on GPS. So that's the uh, fourth one down, fourth one, fourth one from the bottom. Yeah, so anyways, somewhere back there. We'll get it figured out, it's not a major. So for now, we'll just coil it right here. Uh, nothing's hooked to it on the other end and nothing's hooked to it on this end, so we're just gonna coil and stow it here for now. And then uh, next time when we come back, we'll terminate it over here on the GPS um, breaker. And then for those of you that are questioning this mess back here, uh, previous owners. That's what happens when you buy a boat that's had four previous owners. All kinds of fun stuff's happening back here. Someday we'll get to it. Yeah, and then we'll uh, we'll come back down to where the uh, bilge area is and wire that one connected up down there. And then we'll have power to the uh, NEMA 2000 backbone system. So that'll be good. And then all we have to do is just start plugging, plugging in all of our new devices when we get them. Of course, that's when we can afford to get them because uh, they are not cheap. Yeah, anyway, so see up inside there, that's where the wire that cable has to go up and through there and so we're gonna have to make some room we have no room in there we have too many things coming through so we're gonna have to delete more more uh more wires so we have room for that cable to run up through there but nice thing i did is i hooked this wire this wire goes all the way up and comes out through the top and i can use that to pull the cable through or i can use the twine whichever way i decide to go but Bunch of these wires we're not going to be using for the new equipment, and uh, that's one of the nice things about going to something newer, is we can start deleting a lot of these wires and you know streamline it and make it a lot simpler. All right, now it's almost as though we were never even in here making a mess or messing with anything. So this is our NEMA 2000 backbone uh, data cable, and then we're just waiting to get a couple of T connections, and we'll make a little junction uh, area somewhere around here. I don't know we can. We'll figure something out, and then uh, the rest of it's going to go up underneath, up into the uh, pedestal underneath here at the bottom of the uh, cockpit area. And we'll run those wires next time. So, all right, welcome back. We're back after that. I hope you enjoyed it. You probably enjoyed it more than I did. That was not fun, not easy. And at the same time, we were able to install a new transducer up front, a new depth, speed, and temperature transducer, and it's an Airmar brand. And that'll replace the, the old one that was in there before. Uh, hopefully the new one will be better. The old one had a broken paddle wheel. One of the paddles on the paddle wheel was broken off. And so we figured while we're at it, might as well put a new one in. While the boat's out of the water, that's the optimal time to do that. Better than doing it when it's in the water. And uh, we had to change the actual through hole fitting at the same time. So we made sure to seal that up. And this time we did use 3M. 5200. Can you believe it? We actually used it. Yep. It's true. Say it ain't so. It's so. We actually used 3M5200 this time. So, but under the water line is actually the proper use for that type of a sealant. So we're not doing anything wrong. We're not hurting ourselves or setting us up for disappointment down the road. That's exactly the purpose of that sealant is under the water line. So yeah, anyways, we hope you enjoyed the video. We hope you enjoyed seeing us struggle under the floorboards and uh, man, up through that engine compartment area. That was really tough. So yeah, we had to do a little, um, well, a little DIY is what we do here. So that's what we did and that's how we got it to work. Hang on a second. Uh, yeah, it was a lot harder, <laughs> a lot harder than I thought. Well, you like being hard. Man. <laughs> 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 what? What did she just say? Oh my gosh. I can't believe she just said that. Baby. That's crazy. <laughs> well, you know what's on her mind. I miss you too, baby. Anyways, we're just going to keep on going. So, uh, where was I? I was, uh, oh yeah. Anyways, let's see. 
Uh, what does baby always say? All right, so um, thanks for watching, guys. If you are not subscribed yet, please subscribe down below. Cling! And don't forget to like and leave a comment. Let us know what you think. And if you have any ideas, help, tips, or suggestions, or you just want to say hi, we'd love to hear from you. So thanks for watching. We hope you have a wonderful day. See ya. See you. Man, if I only hit record.